we essentially define legislative effectiveness as the proven ability of, in this case, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives to move his or her legislative agenda items through the entire process from bill introduction to perhaps action in committee, action beyond the committee, perhaps passing the House, and if they're incredibly fortunate, having it signed into law. Um, so there are many other potential meanings of the word effectiveness, and it could also be the case that a, we would be the first people to concede that members of Congress could be effective lawmakers, even though they might not appear as effective in the way we're measuring it. But that being said, we think a very straightforward definition of effectiveness is to look at what members of Congress do on a day-to-day -day basis. They introduce bills. Those bills have to go somewhere, and some members of Congress are more successful than others at getting their own legislative agenda items through the process. For every member of the U.S. House of Representatives, we've identified how many public bills they've introduced into the U.S. Congress in a given two-year period. We've identified how many of those bills have received any sort of action in committee, how many of those have received any action beyond committee, meaning if they've been reported out of committee and hit the floor. Um, how many of those bills have ultimately passed the House, and how many of those bills have ultimately been signed into law. And then we've also then uh, essentially graded each bill for its substantive significance. Um, some bills are very commemorative in nature, I mean, it involves the renaming of post offices, for example. And that still obviously requires quite a bit of effort to both introduce the legislation and forge coalitions, but we're the first people to argue that that probably requires a little bit less effort than major health care reform, for example. The average value of a score is one. So anyone that has a score above one, that means they're greater than the average, of, or they're more effective than the average member of Congress. Um, that being said, there's quite a few zeros in the data set. And what that means is that there's a handful of members of Congress in every Congress that just simply don't introduce bills at all. So in some cases, it's quite natural to explain why they don't. Um, the Speaker of the House, for example, tends to introduce very little of any legislation. But no one would necessarily say that the Speaker of the House is an ineffective lawmaker. Um, that being said, though, it's still clearly the case that some members of Congress are not introducing bills or introducing very few bills. And bluntly speaking, similar to any other activity, if you want to be successful, you have to put forth effort in the first place. One of the points that emerged very neatly from the data analysis is that female members of Congress, or members of the House at least, appear to be systematically more effective than their male counterparts, and particularly if they're in the minority party. So the simplest way of saying this is a minority party or a, a female legislator in the minority party is generally much more effective than a male legislator of the minority party at getting her bills to the legislative process. And when you take a look at female and male members of the majority party, there's basically no difference in the relative success. Female members of Congress tend to introduce a lot more legislation than male members of Congress on average. Um, and it's also the case that for minority party women, they tend to be much more successful at later stages of the legislative process than minority party men. And by that I mean they tend to be more successful at getting their bills to receive some sort of action or attention in committee, and also having their bills receive action beyond committee. So again, they're actually passed out of committee and considered on the floor of the House. And one of the things that we noted about that is those latter stages of the legislative process, once you get past introduction, usually require quite a bit of effort. And also, if you're a member of the minority party, it usually, by definition, requires you to reach across party lines to find some common consensus. Because if you're in the minority party, you don't have a natural built-in majority to get your bills moving forward. So who are some of the people who are on this A team? Um, it's pretty diverse, truthfully. I mean, some of them, for those that follow Congress, it seems pretty natural, but uh, Henry Waxman from California, who's retiring at the moment, is one of the people who was, a, well, he still is a highly effective lawmaker, but he emerges as a highly effective lawmaker in our data set based on his period of time before he assumed a committee chair. Uh, Don Young, a representative from Alaska, is highly effective, and his recipe for success, so to speak, seems to correspond very nicely with the habit that we described of members introducing legislation that comports very naturally with their constituency. Uh, so for anyone that's followed Representative Young's career, they note that his entire agenda is almost always Alaska all the time. Um, Tom Lantos, uh, the, the, the recently deceased congressman from California, is also high on the list. Jim Corman, also from California. Some of these are individuals who left the chamber in the early 1990s or sometime thereafter. Um, but Lam Lamar Smith from Texas, who's currently in the U.S. House, actually, he also emerges as being one of the most highly effective lawmakers in the Congress during our period. Um, the Udall cousins, so um, who are, are descendants of Mo Udall, the great legislator, uh, both of them during their period in the U.S. House, they 
easily merge very quickly as highly effective lawmakers, and then to some degree they parlayed that success for successful campaigns and now influential careers in the U.S. Senate. So there are many lawmakers who have essentially moved on to other careers post-House that if you read, looked at the names, they'd seem to resonate with what you would think would be occurring in terms of politics.